Ah, Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Or so the jingles would have you believe. But the harsh reality is that things aren't all rosy cheeks and tinsel at the North Pole. Santa's workshop runs rampant with crime and chaos, and only you can help. Old Saint Nick needs you, so stay tuned to solve these Christmas riddles and save Christmas. Amazing. Number 10, Alpha Side. As an international detective, your job has taken you to the North Pole. Santa has contacted the International Bureau of Christmas Affairs, his grotto is overrun with trouble, and he needs you to help out. The most pressing issue is the murder of an elf. At the crime scene, you find the recently deceased corpse of Ouchie the Elf. He has bloodshot eyes and second degree burns on his hands, but aside from that, there are no other clues. Out of the three suspects, which one is guilty? A, Splashy the Elf who runs the elf community pool, B, Stabby the Elf who crafts chef's knives for Christmas, or C, Glowy the Elf who makes the world's Christmas lights. Despite his suspicious name, Stabby's ruled out. Ouchie wasn't stabbed. Ouchie might have gotten red eyes from swimming in Splashy's pool if it was chlorinated, but that wouldn't explain the burned hands. Asphyxiation is the only related thing that can cause blood vessels to burst in the eyes, so Ouchie must have died from strangulation, from Glowy's Christmas lights, which burnt his fingers when he tried to pull them off. Glowy's going away for a long time. Number nine, the cookie crumbles. On to the second Christmas mystery. An elf has been stealing from Santa's cookie jar, which is kept hidden in the reindeer stables. The elven thief isn't the smartest. Everybody knows elves are severely allergic to dairy, and the jar was full of milk chocolate chip cookies. You line up the elf workers from the stable, so let's find out who stole the cookies. A, the weird one who keeps sticking his tongue out at you, then apologizing and blushing. B, the one whose fingers have little traces of brown on them, or C, the one smiling and giggling. Being a reindeer stable worker, B's probably been shoveling, well, reindeer manure, so brown fingers are to be expected. As for the giggler, while unusual behavior like this might be a sign of allergies in a human, he's an elf and elves are full of joy. Besides, there's stronger evidence for A. A's tongue involuntarily sticking out suggests it's swollen. A swollen tongue and blushing are signs of an allergic reaction, which is exactly what's going on. Elf A stole the cookies and his body won't be the only thing punishing him for it. Bake him away, toys. Number eight, reeling reindeers. While you've been busy, one of the reindeers has drunk Santa's special Christmas brandy. Using anything you may know about Santa's reindeers and their personalities, which of the three suspected reindeer is the drunk one? A, the rowdy one with the red nose, B, the one prancing about like a lunatic, or C, the one singing her heart out like a Christmas drunkard? B and C are easy. The reindeer known for prancing around is the aptly named Prancer. As for the constantly singing, it's Donna the reindeer's well-known trait. A is of course Rudolph, who's known for being the quiet one. Being rowdy on this occasion, he must be totally hammered. Number seven, Rudolph's revenge. Rudolph has spiraled into a drunken rage since you discovered his crime. He sweeps you up in his antlers to a small cabin in the woods where he corners you blocking the exit while he plots your demise. Directly above Rudolph in the rafters, you see another of Rudolph's crimes, the lifeless body of Stabby the Elf. Rudolph has wedged him up there, frozen in a block of ice with several of the knives he crafted so carefully in life. With no phone signal, all you've got for help is a smart home speaker on the table next to you. It's wired up to all the cabin's appliances. With no way to escape, which command will help you the most? A, Alexa, call the police. You can always rely on the 5-0, right? B, Alexa, turn up the heat. It's cold in the cabin. May as well get comfortable. Or C, 
Alexa, play All I Want for Christmas is You. May as well die in the festive spirit. While playing Mariah Carey may be torturous for some, not much will be achieved except making Rudolph angrier. And calling the police is impossible. There's no phone signal. But turning up the heat will melt the ice in the ceiling, causing Stabby's knives to drop down, incapacitating Rudolph. But uh-oh, you've accidentally killed the red-nosed legend. This could be bad. Number six, Christmas Court. Eventually, Santa finds you in the cabin with Rudolph's body. And frankly, you look guilty as hell. He points a budgy finger at you and declares, That wasn't very Christmassy. You're taken to Christmas court where your Christmas spirit will be put to the test. If you're found to be full of the spirit, onto the nice list you go. If you fail, it's the naughty list for you, which means a lifetime of forced labor on the Christmas assembly line. Santa slams the hammer and begins the questioning. Who designed my stylish red outfit? A. St. Nicholas, the Holy Christian Bishop. B. Coca-Cola's advertising department. Or C. An American political cartoonist. While evidence suggests St. Nicholas did sport a thick beard, the Red Santa outfit we know and love was a much more modern invention. While many believe Coca-Cola originally developed the red suit, it had already been around for many years before they adopted its design in the 1920s. The original red-suited jolly bearded gift giver actually appeared in the 1860s. He was drawn up for a political magazine called Harper's Weekly by cartoonist Thomas Nast and soon grew into the icon we're familiar with. Number five, birthday boy. Judge Santa moves on with a smirk he asks you, which date is the closest to Jesus' birthday? A, the 25th of December, B, the 25th of March, or C, the 1st of January. Despite what you might think, no historical or scriptural evidence suggests that Jesus was born on December 25th. That date wasn't even celebrated as Christmas until at least the 4th century CE, nor was he thought to be born on New Year's Day. In fact, extensive study of the Bible and historical evidence indicates that he was more likely to have been born in spring. For example, the shepherds were famously watching over their herds at the time, something typical of springtime. Other studies place the date in summer, but either way, the likelihood is that March is the closest answer to the accurate date. Number four, spreading the love. Santa is impressed with your knowledge, but he's not convinced you really feel the Christmas spirit. He booms. As proof that you're Christmassy deep down, you must prove that you know how to spread Christmas cheer. What's the best way you do this? A, dance a merry jig. B, say five Hail Marys. Or C, sing loud for all to hear. Dancing a merry jig is certainly a gleeful act, but a jig is not just for Christmas. Hail Marys call upon Jesus' mama for contact with the Christian God, but they're not known for spreading cheer. The correct answer is indisputably proven in Will Ferrell's Elf. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Number three, Santa's farm. Pleased with your singing, Santa moves on to the next stage of your trial. He takes you out to his snow-covered farm and hands you a stone with the letters V, I, and another I carved onto it. He tells you to place the stone in the garden at the place that corresponds to the meaning of the stone's letters. Santa is humming a Christmas song, but you can't quite remember what it's called. Where do you place the stone? A, a fruit tree with a gray, stripy-winged bird in it. B, the cow shed where eight of Santa's dairy maids are milking cows or C, a pond with some swans in it. If you were smart enough to crack this one, congratulations, you're a true Christmas genius. 
Each location in Santa's garden corresponds to a verse from the Christmas classic, 12 Days of Christmas. A is a partridge in a pear tree, B is eight maids of milking, and C is seven swans of swimming, which corresponds to the Roman numeral VII, or seven on the stone. Number two, Gingerbread Manor. Before Santa will let you catch the Polar Express back to civilization, you'll need to complete one final task. Santa sends you to the haunted gingerbread mansion. He challenges you to face one of three nasty creatures that have taken up residence inside the tasty, yet cobwebby gingerbread walls. The fighting space is only just big enough to fit yourself and your opponent in, so it'll be a close quarters fight, whoever you choose. Who do you fight? A, a seven foot tall reanimated Christmas turkey wielding carving knives and out for vengeance. B, a boiling hot curdled eggnog monster. Or C, a vicious nine foot tall candy cane creature with sharpened limbs. That huge turkey is not going to go easy with those knives. I mean, wouldn't you be angry if someone plucked and basted you? With its sense of vengeance and sheer bulk, your chances are slim. The candy cane creature is sure to be a deadly opponent too. Solid sugar of that size will crush you, and there'll be no time to lick it into submission. That leaves opponent B. Luckily, eggnog is a liquid and would absorb easily into the gingerbread walls, softening them. A hotter liquid would soften them even quicker. This means even if the monster didn't die in the absorption process, you could push through the softened walls and escape. If the monster wasn't curdled, it'd be a pretty tasty breakout too. Number one, OG Claws. Santa is irritated by your escape. It turns out he'd hope you'd fail. He tries to attack you, but your police training kicks in. When you pull his beard, however, you reveal the truth. His costume tears right off and you see it was actually Santa's evil German brother, Krampus, the whole time. He flees defeated but not before confessing that he'd been secretly carrying out the real original Santa's job for the last 200 years. Krampus had been trying to corrupt Christmas with his evil ways, making children insatiably greedy for more toys than their parents could reasonably afford. All the while, the original Santa had been tied up for centuries in one of three rooms in the basement. The other two rooms now house imposters. With one fragile key, which will break after a single use, you must free the real Santa and save Christmas once and for all. Which door do you open to free the real original Santa? A, a rosy-cheeked, jolly, white-bearded fellow in a red outfit. B, a slimmer, bushy-beard man in a blue outfit. Or C, a balding, bearded man in old robes. If you've paid attention, you'll know that Santa A is the 19th century redesign of the Christmas character. He might shout some advertising slogans at you, but he won't save Christmas. Santa B is just an intermediary design that popped up in the 19th century advertisements and artwork before the jolly red costume fellow's design was settled on. But Santa C is none other than Saint Nick himself, the OG Santa. The Christian saint was around in the third and fourth centuries and was famed for his generosity and gift giving. Alongside a sprinkling of traits from other folklore characters and even a few Nordic gods, Nicholas formed the basis for Santa Claus. Luckily, as a saint, he's immortal, so 200 years locked away isn't too much to handle. Once he stretches out his stiff legs, he'll be ready to get back to the grotto. Maybe go easy on the wish list this year though, hey? After all, 200 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Did you make it through to the end and save Christmas? If not, which snow-covered hurdle did you fall at? Let me know how well you did in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and uh, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals.